Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disown. As you all know, buying an RTX 3080 has been very difficult since its launch, so for many, the only way to get one was to buy a pre-built system. I have built my own systems for years. You can spec it out yourself to make sure it has all the right airflow, the right noise levels, the expansion possibilities, and port placement. Well, I took the plunge and bought the $1900 CyberPower PC Gamer Supreme desktop from Best Buy. It comes with an i9-10900K CPU, 16GB of DDR4, 3000MHz RAM, 1TB SSD and an MSI RTX 3080 Ventus graphics card. Now it is a large card, it does have 3 fans, is 12 inches long and it is heavy at 1370 grams or 3 pounds. It does use two 8-pin power connectors so there's no adapter needed. Its video out ports include three DisplayPort 1.4As and one HDMI 2.1. It does ship with a support bracket, which does help it from putting too much pressure on the PCI Express slot, but strangely it didn't ship with it in place. CyberPower do use some packaging inside the case to help reduce movement of the components and stress on the motherboard. Both side panels are held in with thumb screws making them easy to remove. The case is black, apart from the one panel that is tempered glass, allowing you to see the four 120mm RGB fans, which do look nice. To cool the i9-10900K CPU is a CyberPower branded 120mm AIO liquid cooler. Before purchasing, I rang CyberPower to express my concern that such a cooler would be insufficient to cool this CPU, and they said that they do extensive testing, which I think just means they turn it on and see if it works. As you can see from this screenshot, the 10900K, which pulls up to 110 watts when gaming, hits 100 degrees easily because of the very poor airflow. The cabling behind the motherboard is very neat, and you have the RGB control box taped to the case. There are two fans expelling hot air from inside of the case through a side air vent, but unfortunately they do not move much air at all. Now there is space between the side panel and the chassis to mount two fans. This would give you space to mount a radiator to the front, should you wish. The front cover is held in place by plastic tabs. One would think that the centre panel may come out, but it doesn't. If you move those side fans as I suggested, there is space to mount a radiator and fans on the inside. Fans will have to be set to bring cool air in via the vents along the front edge. The two fans on the radiator are set up rather strangely too. The one on the right pushes air through the radiator, whilst the one closest to the vent sucks air in, so the fans are fighting against each other. You can mount up to a 360mm AIO cooler at the top of the case, expelling air through a filter that is magnetically held in place. The case definitely needs some good fans to bring cool air into it. Not sure if this thermal image does it justice, because the glass does get very hot to the touch, as hot as a car windshield on a very hot sunny day, and as you can see there is no hot air coming out of the rear fan at all. Taking the side panel off brings the temperatures down by some 20 to 30 degrees, so adding air intake fans at the front is the first thing you should do. So annoyingly, these fans not only move little air, but they are loud as well. At idle, the RTX 3080 is silent, so the four case fans are at 43 decibels and definitely will be heard if you're doing some audio recording. And under load, the GPU kicks in, and we are at 53 decibels, which is louder than the desktop I built. The pump itself is quite quiet, and I do think that if you replace the fans to have two or three at the front, and two at the side to bring cool air in, and have two or three fans at the top removing the hot air, plus, you know, use two stronger fans in a push-pull setup for the radiator, you will have much better thermals. If you decide to overclock the 10900K CPU, I advise using a better CPU cooler. I will in fact do a follow-up after I mount my 360mm cooler. There is also an RGB light bar at the bottom, which is nice. CyberPower uses an ASUS Prime Z490V motherboard that supports up to 4266MHz RAM, it has two PCI Express 16 slots and four PCI Express Serve 1 slots. The MSI Ventus is a double slot card which still gives you room for expansion, even with the included ASUS PCI Express Wi-Fi card, whose antenna actually attaches magnetically to the chassis. I find the wireless strength to be pretty poor though, although my access point is one floor above me. The I.O. at the back gives you six USB Type-A ports, 
although two are USB 2, but they're okay for a mouse or a keyboard. Located at the top is the power button, separate audio jacks, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and the reset button. Now such port location is ideal if the laptop is lower than you, such as if it's on the floor, but then you would not see the RGB through the glass window. I think it would probably make more sense to have these ports front facing. Using one of the open PCI Express 1 slots, I actually fitted a USB Type-C expansion card as there wasn't one on the motherboard. And should you wish, you can also make use of the Thunderbolt 3 header on the motherboard to add that to the desktop. There are two 3.5 inch hard drive racks, but no intake fan fitted to keep them cool, so I recommend doing that if you plan on installing some drives. The motherboard does have a second M.2 slot that is Intel Optane ready, accepting cards of sizes uh, 22110, 2280, 2260 and 2242. Probably the best thing CyberPower did on this desktop is actually the wiring. It is very neatly done. The 800 watt Gold Plus power supply is an Apivia PR800W that retails for $72 on Newegg. It comes with seven SATA and four peripheral power connectors. Cool air is brought in from underneath via its 13.5 centimeter black fan. So how does this desktop perform? Well, the stock clocked i9-10900K scored 6,278 points in the, the multi-threaded Cinebench R20 test and a single thread score of 478 points. So it's a very good 10-core CPU. The RTX 3080 scored an impressive 41,579 points in Firestrike and the 10900K scored 28,806. This is the fastest I have seen. Now equally impressive is the time spy score of 16,113 points. The RTX 3080 scoring 16,934 points, which is amazing. Now I tested games both at 1920 by 1080 and 2560 by 1440. If you're rocking a 1080p monitor and considering getting the RTX 3080, I really do recommend upgrading to at least a 1440p monitor. In Star Wars Battlefront 2, I actually left the glass side panel on and the CPU runs in the mid 80s, touching 90 degrees, so not too bad. Here it is using DX11 Ultra settings. The RTX 3080 touches 317 watts and the 10900K touches 101 watts at times. At 1080p, we see only a 6% gain in average frame rate whilst the 1% lows remain the same. It does take some serious graphic settings to showcase much difference. Take Battlefield 5 for instance. The orange bars represent DX12 with ray tracing, whilst blue bars show DX11. Using ray tracing, we see a 19% difference between 1080p and 1440p, whilst in DX11, basically there's no change at all. Either way, performance at 1440p is very good, making even ray tracing playable. Here's some gameplay at 1440p. DX11 is at the top, and DX12 with ray tracing below it. Note that I play the game multiple times. First to measure the frame rate, and second to capture the foot as you see now. Now the reason why I did this was because shadow play reduces your frame rate. With the side panel off, the CPU and the GPU run in the 70s, so this shows what is capable, even with the included 120mm cooler, just by having better airflow. Trapping that hot air from the RTX 3080 in this case is a nightmare. For Metro Exodus, I use the inbuilt benchmark using the extreme quality setting to really push this RTX 3080. I think DLSS did a decent job of helping to improve the ray tracing performance. At higher resolutions, it seems that the gap with no ray tracing is less as the RTX 3080 is allowed to flex its muscle. The 3080 is severely CPU limited at 1080p in Far Cry New Dawn. Even the 200 watt RTX 2080 in the Aorus 17X laptop was actually only 15% behind with 105 FPS. So how would I sum up the CyberPower Gamer Supreme desktop and would I recommend buying it? Well, if you are after an RTX 3080 as soon as possible, then I think it's a good buy. There are people selling the graphics card for $1,200 on eBay. So $1,900 on this desktop is then a no-brainer. You could strip it down and sell the components and still come out ahead probably. Or sell the 3080 and have a fast system for a really good price. Now, if you do decide to keep it, I am sure that just replacing those hopeless fans and configure them to move cool air in and hot air out will result in decent temperatures, even with the included 120mm AIO cooler. Now, if you do plan to overclock the 10900K, then definitely upgrade the cooler. It can accommodate a 240mm or even a 360mm or 
a good Noctua air cooler. I have read some reviews on Best Buy and 8 out of 30 people give it 2 stars or less. Comments ranged from the system being dead on arrival, fans not spinning, or the system freezing, even when in the BIOS. So this begs the question, how reliable is CyberPowerPC? Now they did tell me they test them, and I simply do not believe them. What if you get a failure down the road? Will their support be any good? These are big concerns when you are spending $1900, and although I had no such issues, it does worry me. Fortunately, I can rebuild it, make it run cooler and quieter. At least you now know what you are getting into, and if you get a system that works, it's easy just to replace the fans, and for $1900, it is good value for the hardware that you get. Thank you for watching, remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.